I don't know if you heard, uh, but we've been impeaching the president of the United States. And at long last today, the Senate voted on our long national nightmare just got even longer and more nightmarish. It's <laughs> after three weeks of debate and no witnesses called, the Republican-led Senate voted today to acquit Donald Trump on both articles of impeachment. After the vote, the president celebrated on the roof of the Capitol building with Senators Let's Lindsey go, Graham please. and Mitch McConnell, <laughs> the traditional Gatorade dump. <laughs> Very sexy. Minority leader Chuck Schumer said that from here on, Trump's presidency will always have an asterisk next to it, and Lindsey Graham will be there to kiss that asterisk at all times. <laughs> it, it was, um, it wasn't an anonymous decision. The lone Republican senator who voted guilty was Mitt Romney of Utah, who said, corrupting an election to keep oneself in office is perhaps the most abusive and destructive violation of one's oath of office that I can imagine. Well, you know, give him a time. He'll, whatever you're imagining, I'm sure he'll come up with something much, much worse in the next couple. <laughs> Romney was actually choking back tears as he explained this decision because, well, because he knows the president's about to order the Space Force to attack his home state of Utah. <laughs> In five minutes, Romney laid waste to most every argument Trump's defenders made. He said Trump abused his power, that what he did was clearly impeachable. He said history will judge those who stand with the president. And then he chugged a quart of milk and crushed the empty carton on his head and threw it to the ground. He's out of control. But good for Mitt Romney. There was, um, yes, you can, I think he deserved that. There was some hope that Susan Collins of Maine would join Romney, but instead of the right thing, she decided to do the wrong thing. And th of all the silliness we've had the displeasure of hearing this week, this thought from Susan Collins might very well take the cake. Are you confident that the president won't seek foreign assistance again? I believe that the president has learned from this case. <laughs> <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what he's learned is I will do whatever I want and you will eat it, is what he's learned. This is a man who declared bankruptcy six times. Does that sound like someone who learns? It's not. Not only didn't he learn from this, when he was asked about what she just said that he learned, he told reporters, again, it was a perfect call because there's nothing to learn. He never learns. The day after Robert Mueller testified was the day he threatened Ukraine and Biden. Tomorrow, he'll probably call China to see if he can give Bernie the coronavirus. He doesn't <laughs> learn. And this idea, the Democrats keep pounding that Republicans care about how they'll be judged in the history books. If Trump gets another four years, there aren't, won't be any more history books. There's nothing to worry. 50 years from now, textbooks in Florida will show Donald Trump, Jesus, and the Space Force winning a war against Mexican dinosaurs. That's what we have in our future. The president did weigh in on his acquittal today by announcing that he will be making an announcement. He tweeted, I will be making a public statement tomorrow at 12 p.m. from the White House to discuss our country's victory on the impeachment hoax. <laughs> Great. At this point, he should, he should just go play a round of golf with O.J., right? I mean, just <laughs> play 18 holes at O.J. and tweet... Here we are, just two innocent guys out enjoying 18 holes of golf. Trump got away scot-free after extorting another country with our taxpayer money to help himself win an election. But Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House, is on the hot seat today because she ripped up some paper last night. You see that? So this is the most talked about moment of the day. It happened at the end of the night when Speaker Pelosi tore up the copy of, of Trump's speech. Now, that hasn't happened to Trump since his last divorce. And uh, I will say, I didn't like that. I didn't, I think tearing up the speech was a bad move. She should have rolled it up and spanked him with it. That's, but <laughs> needless to say, Mike Pence was very upset by this act of defiance against master. He described it as a new low. I guess you forgot about the time his boss invited the Taliban to Camp David, but he said it was a new low and he wasn't alone. Uh, for many on the right, this was the perfect opportunity to be outraged over nothing. She ripped up her copy of the president's speech and has just defended doing so. One of the most classless things ever done in the history of the State of the Union. It was disgraceful. It was disgusting. Pelosi's a major loser. How petty. I mean, how childish. And I think Nancy Pelosi just wanted to steal his thunder. And the fact that she would tear a government document up and destroy it like that in itself is, is just wrong. That's 
Pelosi ripping up the stories of these Americans. I wasn't sure if she was ripping up the speech or ripping up the Constitution. When Nancy Pelosi rips up that paper, yeah. she is ripping up those African Americans. <laughs> really? <laughs> right, she's no better than the bad guys from Get Out. That's what's going on here. People really went nuts about this. Nancy the Ripper was trending on Twitter today. There's even talk she may be asked to join a league of supervillains. The Joker and I broke up. I wanted a fresh start. But it turns out I wasn't the only Damon Gotham looking for emancipation. You blow up you. Don't mess with me. <laughs> he does know how to handle a joker. The president got rave reviews on his speech last night from his son, Eric, who went on Laura Ingram's show to lavish all kind, the kind of praise President Daddy never gave him. The media's takeaway has to be, it was dark. I don't know what speech he was watching. It was incredible. It was uplifting. It was incredible. I think my father won re-election today. I really mean that. <laughs> well, he definitely has the sniveling offspring vote locked up. Laura Ingram, uh, you said, she said she doesn't know what the media was watching when they said the speech was dark. She believes it was an uplifting speech. So we boil this speech down, and let's see if together we can figure out why some people thought the speech was dark. Tyrant brutalizes burglaries, sexual assaults, violent assaults, murders, murdering cold blood, criminal aliens, criminal illegal aliens, illegal alien robbery assault, criminal alien gruesome spree of deadly violence, viciously shot, shot her, hijacked, under siege, destroyed, barbarians, bloodthirsty killer, dead, kidnapped, tortured, enslaved, murdered, deadly butcher, monster, murder, kill, terminated, evil, terror, terror, death, destruction, kill, catastrophic, poverty, disease, Hunger, tyranny, fascism, Amelia Earhart. Well, wow. well, that's all right. That's things didn't go. Things went badly for her too. <laughs> the president didn't mention climate change even once last night. Despite the fact that scientists say this is the greatest threat to the survival of the human race, and that's crazy. This would be like if in the movie Armageddon, the president said, "There's no asteroid coming." And the rest of the movie was just a bunch of characters arguing about it until it smashed into the earth. The president did find time to sign some autographs last night. On his way out of the Senate, he stopped to sign a tie worn by Congressman Billy Long of Missouri, signed right over the ranch dressing stain on that tie. And this Billy Long, I, he's a, I couldn't take my eyes off of this guy. In his jacket pocket, he carries these phony $45 bills with Trump's face on them. <laughs> and last night, just take a look at him last night, because isn't he beautiful? I mean, look at that. That is, that is like, he's like a honey-baked ham with thumbs. I mean, that's... <laughs> That's a guy you want a vacation with, you know? The results are still trickling in from the Iowa caucus. As you likely know, the vote count was delayed because of trouble with an app they were using. But with 86% of the precincts now in, Mayor Pete and Bernie Sanders are running neck and wrinkly neck, which is big news for Mayor Pete. He's in New Hampshire now, ahead of the primary there on Tuesday, where he was asked whether or not he declared victory in Iowa too soon. Mayor Buttigieg, was it premature to declare a victory in Iowa How do you feel Iowa about Iowa? Night? How do you feel? You said victorious last night. Do you think that's too early, or do you feel like the looking numbers are going well? Oh, what is going on? It looks like he just did three tabs of acid and walked to his car. <laughs> <laughs> that's the look I had on my face when I snuck in to see Porky's the first time. <laughs> if the results hold, not only would Buttigieg be the first openly gay candidate, to win a presidential caucus. He would also be the youngest. He was born in 1982. And just to put that in perspective, Mayor Pete is younger than Justin Timberlake, Alicia Keys, Britney Spears, Chad Michael Murray, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Pac-Man, the CD player, cell phones, and Elmo, okay? <laughs> Pete Buttigieg is younger than the Muppet your toddler hugs at night. And he loves you very much, too. Hey, there was another happy winner today in Kansas City. They had a parade in Kansas City to 
pay tribute to their Super Bowl champion Chiefs. It was quite a gathering. They even, somehow, a drunk driver even got on the parade route. No way. Oh, my God. <laughs> no way. Oh, oh God. no way. <laughs> oh, my God. This is great entertainment. <laughs> Good day. And then this guy got up, he climbed the tree to get a better look, and we got a better look also. <laughs> Unfortunately, he, um... Yeah, he died. And then everyone showed up. Police has made hundreds of thousands of fans showed up to see the Chiefs. And, of course, that was in Kansas City, Missouri. That, uh, this was the celebration in Kansas City, Kansas, uh, where the president thinks the Chiefs play. If you like that video, click subscribe and we'll be together until one of us dies. <laughs>